All right, guys. Tommy Betts and his grandfather are almost here to pick up Tommy's uh, 98 Heritage. Um, his grandfather gifted him this bike because he was getting a little too old to ride it. So he gave it to him. What a nice grandfather. Wish I had one to give me a bike like this. But I got a plan. I'm going to try to swindle this bike out from underneath Tommy. What I did is I set up my own little bike show for his grandfather. To try to weasel in. To try to weasel into his family. And hopefully he'll gift me the heritage instead of Tommy. So, let's see if this will work. I'll bring you back when they come walking up. I'm not going to pull out all my bikes. I'd like to dig out the Triumph. Maybe he's a British guy. I don't know. But let's see if this works. Hi Sky, say hi. All right, welcome back to the channel everybody. Tommy Betts is about to ride over today. I just got home from work and uh, he's gonna bring the gaskets for his heritage. And we're gonna slap that thing back together, test it out and get him out of here. So hang in there. Get him. Oh. What up, Dirty what's Dave? Up, what's up, what's up? Dirty Dave in the house. Dirty, dirty. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Is this girl, your girl's bike? Yep. That's what I thought. I thought you bought one like that. It carries a lot of tampons. Does it? No. That's the Tampax 100? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Except. Speaking of which, where's your bike? It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> That's what she just, said. I just need engine, wheels, and frame. <laughs> Other than that, I'm good. I got to set a handlebar. All right, buddy, we got... Is he on the couch? Yeah. Oh, we got the handlebars. Tommy Betts yep. here. He brought the gaskets. And we're going to adjust his clutch, put the primary cover on, test it, and he's out of here. Oh. Give her a biscuit. Okay, got Tommy's clutch all adjusted at the clutch. Um, you turn it counterclockwise, uh, half to three quarter of a turn. Um, then you set the free play up here to an eighth of an inch. You use a nickel, stick a nickel in there. So. She's working, now I got Tommy. I had Tommy clean off the, all the surfaces for the primary cover, and I got him cleaning off the uh, uh, primary cover bolts, all the thread sealant, the old stuff out of the bolts. What are you doing? What are you doing? Bumping and grinding. Well, show me. Look at me! I can't, I don't want to lose a finger. <laughs> oh, come on, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so I got him cleaning up every one of the bolts, get the old thread sealing off. Check it out. So that we can, uh, we'll put a little bit of blue on each one. Oh, and I'm gonna have Tommy torque it down. Have Tommy do the work today. He can torque all the bolts down and he can fill it up. He can put his floorboards all back together. And then we'll go for a ride. Oh, I put the clamp. You can't move this thing at all, man. I can't move that pipe at all. Oh. Um, she's solid now. I put that new clamp under there. She'll work for now.
My new squish pipe exhaust clamp held like a champ. Solid as a rock. So far, so good. Front header pipe's not falling out now. It's flying down the road doing 60 mile an hour. All right, let me get back home. Maybe take a ride with Tommy out of here tonight. Definitely go take a ride with him to test the uh, primary out and the clutch. All right, we'll get back to you. Okay, guys, it's time for a little voiceover action. But first, I want to start by apologizing for this lame, uh, really mellow, soft, sissy music. This was Tommy's pick. He wanted this music playing in the background. But anyway, I had Tommy put on the primary cover. Um, I gave him guidance all along the way. And uh, mainly because I just didn't want to do the work. I just wanted to sit back and drink and smoke cigars and make fun of him. Anyway, Tommy was a good student. He took my guidance well, but occasionally he'd ask me weird questions. Like he was like, hey Slick, have you ever woken up and wondered what it was like to feel like a woman? And I'd be like, no you weirdo, I'm a man, I don't think like that. Now keep working. So, I had to look up what the uh, torque specs were on the primary cover, and they were 10 foot-pounds of torque. So I had them torque them all down. The next thing we're gonna do here is we're going to uh, fill this primary up with uh, primary fluid uh, using one of those Harley weirdo funnels that you, you clip into the uh, derby cover hole. Helps you uh, pour the uh, quart of uh, primary fluid in there real easily. Now the next thing we're doing is his floorboards. So we did his floorboards and then he was, uh, he was complaining to me about the, uh, the uh, heel, heel shifter getting in his way and whatnot. I just told him, well, just eliminate it. And you eliminate the heel shifter and you put a little a cover cap over the end of the, uh, the shaft with the spines on it. So it looks nice. But, um, yeah, I was getting real fed up with him, and I just kind of wanted him to leave. It's like, hurry up, let's get this thing finished so we can test ride it and get you out of here. Jeez, doesn't your family miss you? And real quick, this next part, this was not my idea. The guy is so immature. Oh, great. It felt really good. Come on, man. How'd it feel? It 
<laughs> yeah, neutral is like butter now. Perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Man, so good thing I changed my stator. You know? <laughs> yeah, Going right. in there and doing that with the primary, with the chain we, and everything. And we should also double check the, um, check the voltage coming back to the battery. But I'll do that before you come back to pick this up. What do you got to say, Tommy? Thank you, Vert. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. What a nerd. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Jesus. Okay, everybody. It's like a week later. Say hi, Sky. Say hi. It's like a week later, and a lot has gone on out here in the garages since the last time you've seen me working on Tommy's um, heritage. Um, I'm waiting for him and his grandfather to come over and pick it up and get it the hell out of here so I can get some room. I'm sure you know um, I bought a 58 pan head. I already popped the windshield off. It was too hot yesterday. Um, but listen, I got to get back to the project, so I'll circle back and we'll do a full video on this pan head. But uh, we have to get, well, we, what do I got, a mouse in my pocket? Uh, I have to get working on Vic's bike. So in the interim, Vic has dropped off brake shoes. He's dropped off dot, dot three brake fluid. So right now, I want to uh, flush and bleed the brakes to see if I can't get any movement out of that wheel cylinder. So we're going to get into uh, vacuum bleeding. I know I've said this in other videos, but I use this vacuum bleeder. I know it looks like hippies penis enhancement tool, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so and i'm not going to film all this i'll just go over it with you real quick kind of what i do a little bit if i can find a place for this all right the first thing i do before i vacuum bleed is i get it all set up i don't know if you can see any of this Get it, this is my rig, get it all set up. Um, I put my finger over this end to block it off and I see if it'll suck down 10 inches of uh, vacuum and then hold it. Because if it holds 10 inches of vacuum, then I know nothing on my rig is causing me any, uh, is, is causing any leaks, false leaks. If like there was a leak between the hose and one of these connections. So just go down to 10 inches of vacuum. And as long as it holds and stays still, you at least know your rig, your little hoses, don't have small leaks that'll make you think you have a leak somewhere else when actually you really don't. So it's holding at 10 inches. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and this is impossible by myself. I need a cameraman. Um, so I go ahead and put this end on there. I get 10 inches of vacuum going and it'll hold because I know there's no leaks in these hoses. Get 10 inches of vacuum going and then I'll crack the bleeder and it'll start sucking from the master cylinder all the way through the brake lines, all the way through this wheel cylinder and start filling up this canister. As I'm doing that, I got to fill his uh, master cylinder with fresh brake fluid because it'll suck it down. It sucks it down pretty quickly. Typically, you need another person to help you with this, but I got nobody today, so I'm just going to do it slowly a little bit at a time. I'll shut the, the bleeder off, uh, come fill it up, pull it down again, come fill it up. Probably have to do it like four or five times until all that nasty fluid is out of this system. And once I start seeing, and you're gonna to have to dump this a couple times. Once I see it's all clear fluid in here, then I know it's completely flushed out with fresh fluid. 
and then I will bleed it. Make sure there's no bubbles in here when you're cracking it. And you could do the old technique with uh, pump the pedal a whole bunch of times and then hold it down and then crack it. And when it goes down, um, yeah, you know, you know the old tricks, uh, how to bleed brakes. I'm not going to keep going over this a million times. So that's what I do. So let me get at it and I'll show you what I come up with. All right, guys, let me show you what I came up with. Um, I got his new brake uh, shoes on there. I had to remove the pistons from the cylinder, clean them all up. I had to clean the inside of the cylinder. Um, th they were cruddy nasty. There was no scoring on either of the two, the pistons or the cylinder. So, like I said, I put the shoes on, I cleaned up the drum, and it took me forever. It, it actually literally, uh, putting down pressure, it, it, I felt something pop, and it blew all this nasty, uh, cruddy, muddy stuff into my little bucket. So it must have been clogged somehow. Um, then I began flushing it. it. Took forever to flush it. It took me a whole bunch of times uh, dumping it. Got all this brown, nasty, muddy colored uh, brake fluid out of there. Stuff was gross with a lot of sediment. There was a lot of sediment in there. Now I got it. It's not all the way bled yet, but I got clear stuff coming through now. So I'm happy. Um, it's actually working now. It's not completely bled yet. I want to uh, have another guy help me for the final uh, bleeding. But you can actually watch. I'll, I'll push down on the pedal. And it's got a great uh, a pedal feel to it right now. I'll push down. So the other thing I did with it was I put the, um, the brake drum back on it as I was uh, pumping the pedal and I was spinning the drum and then hit the pedal and it would actually work. And they would retract back in. Um, I'll see if we can, uh, I'm gonna push down on the pedal and see if I can't show you guys some movement. You put the wider brake shoe towards the front and the narrow one in the back. Just know that. But they do retract back in so I would like to see him get a whole new resale, uh, wheel cylinder. But for just to prove a point, I wanted to see this thing work. And it seems to be working. Like getting new springs, getting all new brake lines. But for the sake of this video, I did get it to work. They're opening and they're closing. So, oh, and I got to show you something else. So upon my recommendation, I told Vic to check out Shinko's. So these are a lot thinner and he chose to go with the non-white walls so he doesn't have to clean white walls anymore because that's horrible. Um, these are a lot thinner. I have the same ones on my pan at the 58. Check this out. You can see how wide that tire is. These are thinner. It's not going to come across on camera. But these Shinkos are a lot thinner. But, all right, guys, I got to wrap some other things up. We'll get back to a whole episode on this pan head as well. All right, guys, Tommy Betts and his grandfather are almost here to pick up Tommy's uh, 98 Heritage. Um, his grandfather gifted him this bike because he was getting a little too old to ride it. So he gave it to him. What a nice grandfather. Wish I had one to give me a bike like this. But I got a plan. I'm gonna try to swindle this bike out from underneath Tommy. What I did is I set up my own little bike show for his grandfather. To try to weasel in. To try to weasel into his family and hopefully He'll gift me the heritage instead of Tommy. So, let's see if this will work. I'll bring you back when they come walking up. I'm not going to pull out all my bikes. I'd like to dig out the Triumph. Maybe he's a British guy. I don't know. I'd like to pull that one out. But let's see if this works.
Young Slick, we're here. Oh, look at this. Tommy and his grandfather are here. What's up, guys? How are you? This is my grandfather, Pop. Nice to meet you, Pop. Pop. This is Rick. What's your name, sir? Franco. Oh, Franco. I've heard a lot about you. Come on in, man. Sure. Thank you. Wow. Let me get that for you. Yeah, it was really nice what you did for your grandson, giving him that bike and all. He's a great kid. Right? Young man. I set up a little bike show for you. Come check yeah, it out. more than a little bike show. Yeah, that's hey, beautiful. Hey, hey, you guys wow. Something? What's going on? Oh. Come on, Franco. <laughs> come with me. Let's check out these bikes. Wow. That's all I can say is wow. Look, Franco, this... <laughs> This is a 1967 all original paint shovel head. They only made this uh, slab side shovel head for four years. Mm -hmm. 66, 67, 68, and 69. And then they changed the motor over uh, to a nose cone instead of a slab side. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then over here, I just got this girl last week. Which one? This one here. This is a 1958 Panhead. First year for the uh, Duo Glide, a swing arm in the back where it has rear shocks. Because oh, yeah. prior to 58, they were hard tails, right. like that frame over there uh -huh. on my uh, flathead. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the, this Panhead, I love her. I just got her. I've been riding her around all week. Where'd you get it? Uh, off a buddy of mine oh, yeah. in, uh, in my club. Oh. He also collects a bunch of it. motorcycles. Yeah. Hmm. And. No, no electric start. No, kick only, oh, yep. Oh. No, this is kick only. Oh, okay. The 67 shovel head is kick with an electric start. They oh. started an electric start in 1965. And then they didn't put them on all the bikes? Again, this was a 58. Oh, This was pre-65. 65, they started with the electric start. Uh -huh. And this is a 66. I mean, I'm getting all confused with my date. This is a 67. <laughs> Uh, over here's this one's older than you, Pops. Oh, God. This one's older than you. Wow. W when were you born? 43. This is a 1940. Wow. Kick only. This is pre war bike. Yeah. That was when Indian used to give them a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. Because there was big competition for the mm -hmm. Army. Did you get to experience any of that growing up, watching the guys race at all? Bikes? Yeah. Yeah. I watched them race. That's real cool. Real cool. Look at that pipes. Yeah. Then That's, we got. That didn't come with it, though. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no it didn't. Uh, this is primarily stock, yeah. except for the handlebars right. and the Monkey exhaust. Bars, huh? Yeah. Right. Um, I have a front fender for it. I want to put it, but this is the style. It's called a bobber, where they would take off the front fender oh, and yeah, do what yeah. they want with the, you know. Cool. But uh, she's primarily all stock. Um, they're all registered to, to Oh, ride. yeah, they all run, start, ride here. Yeah. I don't have nothing cool. that doesn't. This is my 1970 XLCH Sportster. She's real pretty. You know, I can't believe that they go out to Sturgis, the women, with little bikes like that. Hey, you know how sore you would be riding that bike it. out there? Well, I mean, I love that bike, but I would never ride at the Sturgis. Oh, and I'm sorry to all the people out there that are tougher than me, and they can ride. I can't. The women do. Yeah, my hat's Mostly. off. My hat's off to those people that can ride that all the way out to Sturgis. Or they don't have any. If I had all the time in the world, then maybe I could. You, you said know, they but. don't have balls. That's Did you get what I said? <laughs> well, I missed that. They don't have any nuts. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and that usually comes with no brains that either. That would hurt. Oh! <laughs> but uh, over, no. You said it that they usually don't come with any brains either. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is my 1979 Ironhead. Uh, I built this one myself. It was a stock bike, and I cut cut the frame in half, welded on the hardtail, welded on all the parts you can buy. You know the, the tank. Get about a muffler. Well, they're there. They're Where? just, they're right here. I just cut them real Those short. Are mufflers? Not <laughs> well, not, mufflers. they don't call them mufflers. They just call them pipes. Pipes, right. But uh, <laughs> I'm not done yet with this bike. I'm still going to make like an upsweep exhaust oh, like yeah. on that flathead. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just uh, haven't had the time. Yeah. All the different projects and all the different people coming over. <laughs> when oh, I get man. time for myself, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, Tommy leaves them alone. <laughs> I, I didn't pull my all my bikes out. I got a 68 Triumph chopper. Oh, you into British oh. bikes? Up in the what corner there. Triumph? It was a, uh, I think a Bonneville or a T, 
T120. I forget, but it's yeah. a TR6 motor, 650 motor. I just love the Triumph motor. Ooh. That That's a chopper that someone had built. I couldn't refuse on the price. Um, <laughs> I don't like that style. I'd build my own better. I'm going to pull the motor out one day and do my own chopper that fits me better. That's really small. Yeah. Triumphs are inherently small bikes. Yeah, you know, and then, like I said, I got a 92 um, Harley, Evo. Harley's just making a 400 now. Are they? I, came out with I don't keep up with the new stuff. I like to collect yeah, old just, stuff, you I know. I happen to see it on TV or something. They coming out with a 400, because I always wanted a 500 Harley. Well, Harley came out with a 500 bike and a 750 bike that they were selling overseas in India, oh, because that's a big yeah, market. Because, yeah, you know, yeah. in India, they all ride motorcycles. Yeah. Um, maybe that's what you're talking about, maybe? No, no, I don't think so. I think it's A 400, huh? Yeah. I don't keep up with the latest news. This is about the newest one I own, a 2011 uh, Road King. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a, big that's a big girl, yep. Now, that one I could ride all the way to Sturgis and back with no problems. Yeah. You know, sure. standing on my head. That's a cruiser. Uh, yep. Yeah. To get hurt on. Yep, I, and I've been in the hospital with that bike See? for four yeah. days. <laughs> yeah, they're tempting. Uh, yeah, they, they look fun, like but they will hurt you. They go like rockets. And this one here, but you know what I like about that? I can be on the street and then jump out in the dirt oh, yeah. and then go back out in the street. You know, it's oh. a dual sport. Yeah. yeah. He's got a license plate on it. See, it's registered. And all uh, this this old uh, seventy one uh, Sportster is my brother's bike, who was our, originally my dad's bike. Hmm. Back in the 70s. So my oh, yeah. brother found the guy that owned Family it. history. Yeah, owned it. So my brother bought it, and then it was pretty ratty and pretty rough shape. So I was like, well, why don't we just make it a chopper and make it cool looking? You know, so that's where we're at right now. Ran out of time. I'll, I'm going to get back to this when I get a chance. Right as Actually, as soon as Tommy's bike's off the table, this one's going back on the table again. So uh -huh. we'll get there. Your brother can take me now. You're an ambitious guy, I'll tell you. That. Uh, yeah, I, I think I have too many ambitions. <laughs> All right, let's go start this other bike up of yours. Okay. It used to be mine. I, it's not my bike and apparently anymore. it used to be mine, too. <laughs> All right, Tommy, have a safe trip home. Franco, it was nice meeting you, bud. Pleasure, Remember, my pleasure. Think about it. I would like to uh, own one of your bikes or cars or something. All right, Tommy, have a safe trip home. <laughs> All right, nice meeting you, Franco. Again, you're welcome here anytime, brother. I love hearing Thank your you, stories. Sir. You made me feel home. All right, cool. Thank you. All right, Pop. Love you. Okay. Be safe. Right safe. Will do. Thank you. I drop Vic's rear rim and tire off today at Screamers. Um, he's mounting the tire for me, new tube, new strap, mount the tire. Then I'll be able to get the uh, front one off, get that one done. Uh, I really want the rear one done because I want to test to see if these uh, the rear brakes are actually going to work if I, if I got it done right. Um, hey, I ordered up a solo seat for the panhead. We're going to go over to panhead soon. Trust me. Uh, I think my next video, I'll make it all about the panhead. I got some things today. I got a new kicker pedal for the panhead. So I don't like the red one. So I got a black one. Got some spotlight lamps. 
uh, some external oil filters for the pan head. Got all that at uh, Bill's Old Bike Barn out in Bloomsburg, PA. You can go check out his website. Also wanted to say thank you to a couple of my club brothers. I, did, I didn't make last month's meeting and uh, here they uh, gave me a care package. Uh, it's a bunch of shop supplies, all kinds of stuff, chemicals for your shop, yada yada. Um, I think it was uh, my boy Jesus, um, Brownie, all them guys and that crew out there at RMC. All right, let me um, let me put this camera up on the stand and I'll uh, I'll close this out. All right, the first thing I got to say is really important. I want to thank all of you, all you subscribers, anyone who's subscribed to my channel. I want to thank you. You guys got me well over 5,000 subscribers now. It's amazing. I'm humbled. I'm blown away. I can't even believe it. Like in a year and a half. Awesome. And for all you guys that didn't subscribe, they're sitting here watching this right now and you're not subscribed, go fuck yourself. But anyway, I really want to thank um, Tommy Betts and his grandfather Franco for uh, letting me film them in this video. They're really cool. And Franco, I mean what I say, you're welcome here anytime. Come over, hang out, watch us work on bikes, just tell old bike stories. You know, I'm down for it, man. You're welcome here anytime, brother. So, I'm going to end this right here. Um, next video should be on this panhead, and uh, I'll give you a full walk around and talk about the panhead. Um, make sure you go check out my uh, brother, partner in crime, Hippie, from Hippie's Chopper Corner down there in Tennessee, and my good buddy, old Ralph, up in uh, Canada at It's My Time, Let's Go. Go check out them channels. They're really good. Jersey Nick Moto. Check him out, too. All right, guys. I'll talk to you in the next episode. See ya.